All right, let's finish this integral up here. We had worked through partial fractions and because we had, whenever we factor this uh, difference of two cubes, we got a linear factor times a quadratic. So we broke that up. We solve for a, b, and c and plug those back in and got this. And so the first integral is really easy. The second integral is a little challenging um, because it's not just a u and du. This is one of those where you see what the denominator, if you let that be your u, what the du would need to be. It would need to be 2x plus 2 or 2 times x plus 1. So really you want you can bring a one half out front and then you want your um, numerator to be x plus one and so one way that we could make that x plus one and I'm gonna work with it over to the side here if I factored a negative out <clears throat> then that would be x minus two in the numerator well what I could do is I could say well that could be x plus one minus 3 because x plus 1 minus 3 still gives me x uh, minus 2 and this x plus 1 here this would be the du for the denominator and so you just want to use term wise division and put both of these over x squared plus 2x plus 4 alright so I would have the negative of x plus 1 over x squared plus 2x plus 4 which that's 1 over u du now that's a natural log integral and then you'd have minus 3 over x squared plus 2x plus 4 and so you want to complete the square in the denominator so that would be x squared plus 2x plus blank plus 4 minus blank so whatever you put here you have to subtract here so half of 2 is 1, 1 squared is 1 so I'm going to add 1 here, subtract 1 here so that this will factor into x plus 1 squared and then that's plus 4 minus 1 so that'll be plus 3 so this is the denominator and now this is what type of integral? Got u squared plus a squared inverse tangent integral. Alright, so we from this we made a natural log integral and an inverse tangent integral. Alright, so this first integral is the natural log absolute value x minus 2 and then we have this integral here. Now remember I have minus both of these integrals. So I'll put the minus with this one and then I'll make this one um, a plus when I do it. So that'll be, you can't forget this, this right here either. Remember the du is 2x plus 2 so you have to factor a 2 out. So it's going to be minus 1 half natural log absolute value x squared plus 2x plus 4 and now this last integral here um, what's the formula for inverse tangent I'm gonna put plus and we have 3 and then it's 1 over a so that's gonna be 1 over the square root of 3 arc tangent or inverse tangent u over a so x plus 1 over the square root of 3 plus c this will simplify this 3 over the square root of 3 um, that'll simplify to just the square root of 3 because you multiply the top and bottom by the square root of 3 the 3's cancel out so you could just write 
square root of 3 arctan. All right, that's your answer. So the main thing that we remember about these by parts, these integrals by parts, is, is how to do the algebra. That's, that's the main thing that you're going to have to concentrate on. Um, so I do have a video on the algebra. If you haven't watched it once or twice, I would suggest doing so. If not, you know, these are just going to be impossible for you. So we have linear factors, repeated linear factors, quadratic factors, repeated quadratic factors. Those are the possibilities. Um, and if you see an improper fraction where you can divide first, then make sure that you divide first. Okay. So I'm going to do one more of these, and then we're going to move on. All right, let's say I have the integral of 2x cubed minus 4x minus 8 over x squared minus x times x squared plus 4 dx. So I'm going to give you a second. Try to set up the partial fractions that we're going to have to use. Some people would just look at that and see two quadratics, and so that's the way they would try to work the problem. But that's not it. You have to factor an x out. Anything you can factor. As long as you're not doing anything, I guess, illegal <coughs> math-wise, you can factor it. And so that's going to equal a over x plus b over x minus 1 plus cx plus d over x squared plus 4. Now we need to multiply through by the common denominator. This denominator right here. So x times x minus 1 times x squared plus 4. We're going to multiply that times every term. So the, the reason why we do that, really, is so we can get rid of this here, and we're just left with the numerator, 2x cubed minus 4x minus 8. And now, multiply that times each one of these terms. So there's going to be one factor that's going to cancel out each time. So this is a times x minus 1 times x squared plus 4 plus b times x times x squared plus 4 plus cx plus d times x times x minus 1. Alright, so now I'm going to multiply all of this out. So that's going to be x cubed plus 4x minus x squared minus 4 plus and that's going to be bx cubed right plus 4bx now here before I multiply I'm just going to go ahead and make this x squared minus x all right, and so I'm going to just full, I'm going to say this times this. So it's going to be cx cubed minus cx squared plus dx squared minus dx. Whoa. All right. So 
I do need to multiply this a times everything too. So this is going to be ax cubed plus 4ax minus ax squared minus 4a plus b x cubed plus 4bx plus cx cubed minus cx squared plus dx squared minus dx. Now we need to arrange like terms, combine like terms, or put them together really. Um, so I have an A, let me do this in different colors, I have an AX cubed, a BX cubed, and a CX cubed. So I'm going to be able to rewrite that. Look at the coefficients. I have a positive A, positive B, positive C. So that's going to be A plus B plus C times X cubed. All right. Now let's look for the X squared terms. I have one here, here, and here. Look at the coefficients. So I'm going to have, I'm going to just put plus here and then in parentheses I'll say minus A minus C plus D and that's times X squared. Now I'm going to look for the X terms. So I have 4AX, I have 4BX, and I have minus DX. So I'm going to write plus 4A plus 4B minus D times X. And now I need to write all of my constant terms. So I only have one constant term, right? That's minus 4A. which means that I'm going to be able to solve for A really easy. Alright, so now what you do, the reason why we do that is so that we can compare the coefficients on the left side to the coefficients on the right side. So that's going to be 2 times, or no, that's going to be 2 equals, and then the coefficient of x cubed on the right side is a plus b plus c. Now you can write a plus b plus c equals 2, either way is fine. There is no x squared term on the left side, so that means negative a minus c plus d is equal to 0. Alright, then I have 4a plus 4b minus d equals what? Negative 4. And then the easiest one of them all, negative 4a equals negative 8. So you can see you can solve for a really quick. And we have a equals 2. Alright, so what I would suggest doing now is I would plug in a 2 for A, for every A. Now let's see what happens. So I'd have 2 equals 2 plus B plus C. So you could move that 2 over and you'd have B plus C equals 0, or 0 equals B plus C. Alright, I'm going to plug it here in this second equation plug in a 2, so I have negative 2 minus C plus D equals 0. So if I move that over, I have negative C plus D equals 2. Alright, and then if I plug it in this last equation here, I'll have 8 plus 4B minus D equals negative 4. So if I move the 8 over, I'd have 4B minus D equals negative 12. Alright, and if you look at my remaining equations, I have an equation with B and C, I have an equation with C and D, and I have an equation with B and D. And if we have equations and unknowns, 
and we want to work and solve for maybe two at a time, we need two equations with the same variables. So what I would suggest doing is maybe taking this first equation here and move the C over so you'd have B equals negative C and then over here where you have a see I have a C and a D here I have a B and a D here but if I plugged in negative C right here for B I'd have negative 4 C minus D equals negative 12 and now I have two equations that have the same two variables okay and so so you can solve by elimination or substitution. I usually solve by elimination. Some people call that the addition method. And the way that I would do that, um, I want the same number in front of the variable with a different sign. And you can see I have a plus D and a minus D, so I already have that. So if I write this down here underneath, and then I add the two equations together, you can see I'll get negative 5C and then the D's cancel out equals negative 10. So divide both sides by negative 5 and you get C equals 2. Alright, so if, if C equals 2, what can I solve for really quickly? Yeah, I can, I can solve right here. I have B equals negative C. So what does B have to be equal to? Negative 2. All right. Up here, I have negative C plus D equals 2. So negative 2 plus D equals 2. So then what does D have to be equal to? D, if you move the 2 over, equals 4. So I've solved for A, B, C, and D. Now that is a lot of work. Um, you just have to be really careful. Make sure that you don't make any mistakes. I'm not going to say that if you get fractions you made a mistake, but if you get a couple of whole numbers and you get a fraction, then maybe they need to all be whole numbers. I don't know. Uh, you know, If I'm nice, I'll give you one that has all whole numbers. That way if you get fractions, you could kind of figure that part out. Uh, that you're messing up and see where you messed up. Anyway, so now what that means is that original integral, that integral of 2x cubed minus 4x minus 8 over x times x minus 1 times x squared plus 4 dx. We can now rewrite this integrand so that we have, that'll be the integral of it was a over x, so 2 over x, and then we had plus b over x minus 1. Well, b is negative, so you can put minus 2 over x minus 1 plus, and we had cx plus d. So 2x plus 4 over x squared plus 4. Now if I look at this integral right here, if I let my denominator be my u, then my du would be just 2x. Well I have more than just 2x up here, but I do have a 2x. So how about we do this? Let's use term-wise division and write this as 2x over x squared plus 4 plus 4 over x squared plus 4. And if we do that, then this last integral is a inverse tangent or an arc tangent integral. And this is just a 1 over u du integral. So this is a natural log integral. All right, so all of these integrals become pretty easy to do, right? That's 2 times the natural log of the absolute value of x minus 2 times the natural log absolute value of x minus 1 plus natural log of x squared plus 4. You can drop the absolute value bar since you have that x squared term in there and that can't be negative. Um, now with this last integral here, remember it's 1 over a, so what is a? 
A is 2. I have a 4 up top. So it's going to be 4 times 1 half, or 2, arctangent, U over A. So what is U? That's right, just X over 2 plus C.